Hello friends, in this tutorial we are going to learn about Linux Shell scripting. This tutorial is for all the people who want to learn Linux from the basics as well as it covers the advanced concepts of your shell scripting. So here before we begin with the shell scripting, I would like to introduce the Linux operating system first. As we know, you have multiple operating systems into the market. You might have heard about the Windows operating systems, Linux and Mac operating systems. Same here, the Linux operating system is altogether have different distributor and it works completely different from the other operating systems. So basically, first we will understand what the Linux operating system is and how it works. So very first, we will see about the kernel version of your operating system. As we know, if I'm talking about any operating system, either your Windows, Mac or Linux, it has two different parts into it. Means two different core of programs. One act as a kernel and other act as a shell. Where the shell we are going to see later on, but basically I'm going to make you understand what the kernel is. So kernel is a part of a program or a program inbuilt into the operating system so that whatever the commands a user give or whatever the commands you give, it generally takes those commands and make our hardware to work on it. So basically, Kernel is that particular person who acts as an intermediator between the user commands and the hardwares. So next what we are going to see is like your kernel as it is doing everything but unlike your other operating systems like your Windows and Mac it has a multiple distribution. You might have heard about the Linux operating system provided by Red Hat, Fedora, CentOS and many more because the operating system itself is an open source operating system which means you can see each and every core written into this particular operating system and how it is formed. If you want to modify this particular operating system, you can modify the codes, you can add some more programs and rebuild a new operating system and publish by your own. That's the reason the distribution of this operating system is free for everyone. No one is going to restrict you and this particular operating system is having no copyright issues. Here, this operating system Linux is introduced by a Linux Torvald. Linus Torvald is a student actually. He actually invented this particular complete Linux operating system during his studies. So he was working on a project on a Unix operating system. So during the Unix operating system project, he learned Unix very well and he find out some of the changes can be made into Linux kernel and can create a new version of your kernel. So when he introduced a new version of the kernel that was introduced by his name but here we have introduced it as a Linux operating system. So this operating system as I told like here Unix has been completely built on open source operating system. Its codes are completely open source. Here again the Linux operating system is open source for everyone. So as discussed into the earlier slide that all these particular operating systems are open and they are free. So here we do not have any licensing issue like your Microsoft and other operating systems. We can get this operating system free of course, we can download it, we can install this operating system without a particular license and there is no such issues like of licensing. Without license you won't be able to use any particular features of this operating system or you have limitation. So there is no such thing. So this operating system is completely free for you. As said, this is open source. You can also study the Linux operating system completely. You can dig into the all the particular programs you have for your interfaces, for your applications, for your protocols, and you can learn this operating system very easily. The next thing is that most of the applications in this operating system is free for you. Same, again, unlike your other operating system, as you go for applying a Windows operating system, into that, if you install Microsoft Office or if you want to install a small software called as WinZip, even you need to buy a license for it. But here, if you see all the particular applications like your open office, for your playing your media players and any other particular applications you require that will be completely free for you. So here, all the applications are free. Again, one of the benefit what we have is these servers are very reliable. Again. Unlike your other operating systems, most of the services works independently. So there is no collision occurs into any of the particular applications or the services. So independently they will work and the servers are mostly stable. 
So the downtime what we have into this particular operating systems is very less than the other operating systems. That's the reason we like to use this Linux operating system for building our servers or a development servers or any particular databases server so that we have a zero downtime or a very rare route downtime. As we have seen, this complete Linux operating system is based on Unix operating system. So what are the commands you generally use on your earlier version of your Unix operating system? Same command you can use it. As we can say, it as a clone of Unix with some advanced features. So this is benefits of your Linux operating system. So ultimately, in the near future, you will find most of the servers are all built on the Linux operating systems and the scripting into it is very powerful. So we are going to learn everything into the next sessions.